Today we're doing some, something a bit different, building actual hardware. The hardware that I'm going to be building is a LM317 voltage power supply kit. If you uh, would like to purchase this kit, there will be a link in the area below. Let's do this. Okay, so I'm gonna be doing a bit more hardware stuff like um, electronics and um, Arduinos. But for now, let's have a look at this beautiful kit. Okay, so first we have this voltage meter. Let me open up the package. Pretty basic voltmeter. Put some wire and heating. Let's see what's inside here. We have a couple of resistors and diodes. We have an IC over here and it's bay. We have a pot, capacitors, a packet of screws, clamps, We've got a couple of LEDs over here. We have connector blocks, smaller capacitors. Ceramic capacitor, a speaker, another resistor, smaller diodes, and here's where the magic lies the LM317. This is a 1 to 25 volt adjustable regulator with a max amperage of 1.5 amps. We have a nut and a knob for the pot and a smaller potentiometer. Okay, next up we have the board. Everything is printed on here. We have the transformer and we've got the acrylic case with um, the wrap and so on it. But I'm gonna let you guys figure out how to assemble that one. I'm going to be mainly focusing on the assembly of this board. Okay, so here's a close-up image of the board and you can clearly see where all the components are supposed to go. Okay, here's some tools that you might require to build this. You will need some pliers, a soldering iron, a multimeter, this is a very cheap one. But it will do the trick. A uh, lighter. The lighter is mainly going to be used inside this packet. There's a meat shrink and you're going to be using that with it. And of course some solder. Okay now a roll of solder like this for electrical equipment is very expensive but you'll probably use it for five six years. Another thing that will help out a lot is these helping hands. They're just basically like clamps to hold the board in place uh, while you work with it so it doesn't fly all over the place okay first we're gonna test the components with a multimeter so first make sure that your multimeter is working in fact by touching the lead wires to, to each other 
while in um, the speaker mode, you should hear a beeping sound. Okay, first we're going to test the diodes. Now diodes work by only sending voltage through one way. So by putting the positive on the one end and the negative on the other end, you should have current flowing through. But when you reverse the polarities on them, the current should not go through. These diodes are going to be used in the bridge rectifier to rectify from AC to DC. I'll make a video a bit later on how to test these transistors. Okay, now we're going to test these resistors. Put your multimeter on ohm mode and then see the reading. Now the reading should correspond to the color code of the resistor. You can check up the color codes on the internet or use this program called ElectroDroid. It is completely free but there is a pro version that has more capabilities. So now we dial in the code and then make sure that the code uh, is within tolerance of what you're measuring. Now be sure to test all of the rest of the resistors as well. Next thing we're going to start testing this potentiometer. It's a 5k potentiometer. You put one lead in the center, that's the common, and one on one of the outside pins. Try to get it on there carefully, it might be a bit tricky. These clip types actually help a lot. Now turn the port all the way up and it should give you a reading of uh, zero and all the way to the other side it will give you the maximum. And you can test the other side as well just to double check. And this thing is working great. Okay, and so since my other multimeter with a capacitance testing on it is not working well, um, I would have to uh, create another video to show you guys how to test capacitors. Okay, and now that all of the prep is out of the way, let's start assembling this board. Okay, first we're going to insert the diode, note where the white line is on the diode and put that in correspondence with the white line that's on the board itself. You bend the leads of the diode and then bend them over when it's on the other side. Do this for all of them. Now that they're in place, we can start soldering them. Get the helping hands and clamp it. Once that is done, we clip off the leads. Try to clip them as close as possible to the board. Next up is the LEDs. The long pin is the positive and the short pin is the negative and that must correspond when you plug putting it into the board. The board does have um, markings to say which color is supposed to go into which slot. Do a quick solder, snip off the pins and um, if your LEDs are on crooked that's fine. You just heat up the pins, push the LEDs tight onto the board. Next up is the IC's header note where the notch is on top now the small 100k potentiometer now the resistors polarity is not an issue with them so you can put them either way around but you must make sure that um, you're putting in the correct resistors into the correct places now insert the speaker the long lead is a positive the positive is also marked on top when you remove the sticker. 
Now we insert the ceramic capacitors. You also don't have to worry about polarity. Now we insert the other capacitors. Note that the white strip is negative. There's also a white marking on the board and you must, they must correspond with each other. Next up is the terminal blocks. You must connect them so that the connectors point outward. They do have a little groove on the side so you can slot them in right next to each other. Now we insert the chip. Note where the notch is in the chip at the top. Next up is the potentiometer. Make sure to point it outward. If the potentiometer is crooked, you can adjust that by reheating the leads. The NPN transistor is next. Uh, note where the emitter, base and collector uh, gets plugged into. This image over here uh, shows you where the emitter, base and collector is by the half moon shape of the um, transistor itself. And next up is the voltage meter. We're going to have to remove the wires from it. So let's clamp that down. Quickly remove the wires. While it's here we can quickly tuck the other joints as well. Now take three of your scrap off cut wires and attach them like this. Bend them backwards. Snip off two of the separators. Assemble the component like this. And now push it into the board like this. Screw it in tightly but not too tight. Make sure it's flat and then you can solder the assembly. And now the LM317. I would recommend you get some thermal paste. This is cheap thermal paste uh, that I got from a computer store. Add it to the back of the chip. Smear it a bit with your finger. And smear a bit on the heatsink. Now with a screw and nut, screw the assembly together and make sure it's nice and tight. Finally add the assembly to the board and solder it. And now let's test the transformer. You might not know which side you're supposed to put into the mains and which side to get out 12 volts. But I'm going to show you how to do both of those with one test. So you put your multimeter on um, test signal mode. It will give you a value over there. Take the leads on the other side and connect it. As you can see this value is lower. Ok so now we know the transformer is working and the higher value goes to the mains. I can trust you can assemble the rest of this kit. Just don't tighten the screws of the acrylic too hard or else it will crack. I on the other hand have decided to do my first modification to this and use a different transformer. This is safe as long as the transformer gives out 12 volts. Now what I'm upgrading is this transformer can give more than um, enough amperage to satisfy the 1.5 amps of the LM317 as the kit can only give up to 0.9 amperage. The LM317 can use up to 25 volts but using 25 volts might actually blow the IC that's on there because the resistors and everything has already been calculated to give um, that IC sufficient power. Okay, this entire video took me about uh, an afternoon to make but you can probably make this kit within two hours max. Um, as you can see my kit is working. Um, so I hope that uh, if you buy this actually that your kit will work as well. Please like, share and subscribe. And for all of my current subscribers, um, do you like the new videos that I'm going to try to make, the new hardware ones? Uh, if you do, please leave a comment in the comment section below and then we can talk about um, what other kits you would like me to build. Thank you guys for watching. Goodbye.